Alright, welcome back. Yeah? So we are looking at growing and meaty here. Uh, so growing where there is a growing stream of cash flows with fixed maturity. Yeah? So here there are four known elements. Okay, uh, one is R, the other one is N. R is the interest rate yeah? or discount rate, N is the number of period. The okay, number of periods, then the payment. Yeah. And then you have G, yes. So this is an additional element here. G is the growth rate, yeah, in the payment. Okay, G stands for the growth rate in the payment, yeah. So payment will grow at this rate, a fixed rate. The unknown element usually is the present value of growing annuity, yeah? PG, uh, PVGA, yeah, growing annuity, present value of growing annuity. All right. So let's look at. Uh, uh, the timeline, yeah? how this timeline will move, okay, uh, or how this timeline is shown yeah? for growing entity. So, this is the timeline here from zero now, okay, one period from now, two periods from now, T periods from now, and N periods from now, yeah. All right, and then you have the interest rate here, okay, interest rate or discount rates given. Then you have this payment, yeah, this is A1. This is the payment at the end of period one. This is the payment for end of period two. Yeah? This end of period two is actually A1, this payment, multiplied by one plus G. Okay, raised above one. Yeah? So for period T, the payment will be A1, multiplied by one plus G, raised above T minus one. Yeah? So notice T minus one. Two here means one here. 1 here is equal to uh, multiplied by 1 plus g raised to power 0, yeah, which is 1 minus 1, yeah, 0. Yeah. All right, therefore, here n will be a1 multiplied by 1 plus g raised to power n minus 1. Yeah. All right, so here you can clearly see that the payment, okay, there is fixed, I mean, the payment is at regular interval, but the payment is not fixed. Yeah. The payment grows, yeah, it grows. But the fortunate thing here is that it grows at a fixed rate, yeah, which is G. Yeah, it grows at a fixed gro growth rate, uh, which is G. Yeah, so therefore we can actually summarize this. Yeah, we want to know what is the present value of all this now. Yeah, so this is the growing uh, present value of growing MET. Yeah, all right. So this is PVGA, okay, and this is the formula. Okay, now this formula looks a bit complicated. Yeah. But this formula is similar to the formula that we have seen earlier, which is this yeah, present value of NVT, the normal NVT. Yeah? Uh, I write this slightly differently so that you can compare the two. Yeah? This is the present value of NVT, the ordinary NVT. Yeah? is actually A divided by R. Actually, we have said this. Yeah? This is actually 1 minus 1 plus R raised to the power of negative N, right? Okay, 1 minus 1 plus R raised to the power of negative N. This negative N is actually similar to this. 1 over 1 plus R raised to the power of N. Yeah? Okay, and then all this divided by R. So this is the same formula. Yeah? It's just written slightly differently. Yeah? In a different form. Okay, so that we can compare the two. Yeah? Actually, there's not much difference. Yeah? There are only three differences. Okay, let's look at the differences here and there. Yeah? The first difference is this, yeah. You have one plus g here. You don't have one plus g here. Raised to the power of n, yeah. Here you don't have that. Otherwise, the same. Yeah? This one minus is the same. One minus, same, yeah, right. Okay. The second difference is this. You have minus g here. You don't have minus g here, right. And the third difference is of course this, yeah. Here you have a one. Here you have only a, yeah. A is fixed. Here a is not fixed because a one is different. A two is different. A three is different, yeah. So we always take the first A1. Yeah? A1 is not at A0, yeah? not that. Yeah? It is A or the payment at the end of the first period. Okay, so this is important. Yeah? Some students, they take this A0 yeah? and then you get the wrong answer. Yeah? It's always A1. Yeah? Okay, so once you know the difference, then you can recall this formula. Yeah? This, uh, now, because uh, the final exam yeah, for this semester is going to be online, okay, you may not be able to uh, get the formula, yeah, formula sheet. Okay, and there will be questions, but there's no formula sheet. Of course, uh, this time you have one advantage you can always refer to. Uh, 
uh, your textbook. Yeah, you can. It's an open book test actually. Yeah, you can look at the textbook and solve the question. Okay, so that's the advantage. So the textbook will have all the formulas, yeah? but you you need to know where to look. Yeah, so it's important for you to uh, know the formula. Yeah. Okay, so this is how you can recall the formula. Yeah? You don't have to refer. Once you know this formula, you can recall this formula easily. Yeah. So these are the three differences. Yeah. All right. So now note this. Yeah. This formula can only be applied when R is greater than G. Yeah. Here means the growth rate is always less than the required rate of return or the discount rate or the interest rate. Which is a reasonable assumption. Yeah? Usually G can never be greater than R. Yeah? Okay, especially in the long run. Yeah? Okay, now this is for present value. What about future value? Okay, you can also determine the future value. Yeah? Now this future value of growing annuity will be just after. Remember, yeah, future value is always one period, yeah, or sorry, just after the final payment. Yeah? It includes the final payment in this future value. Okay, not excluding yeah this will be included yeah now this formula okay future value of growing annuity not present value yeah which is similar a1 minus r minus g same okay multiplied by this part is different yeah you just take 1 plus r raised to the power of n minus 1 plus g raised to the power of n yeah so you have this but you don't have this here okay but this one one you replace with 1 plus r raised to the power of n. Yeah? So this is the future value of growing annuity. Alright, let's apply this. Yeah? Okay, you may uh, need some time to consider this. Yeah? You may want to take this down. Okay, you want to maybe take a note of this formula. Yeah? But let's move on. Now this is the uh, example of growing annuity. Yeah? A defined benefit retirement plan offers to pay you 20,000 per year. Now this uh, is a bit misleading. Yeah? Uh, here, this twenty thousand is to be paid at the end of the first year, okay? And this payment will be paid for forty years, and increase. Yeah, the annual payment. The first payment is twenty thousand at the end of the first year, but this annual payment will increase by three percent each year. Yeah, there are some uh, benefit programs like that. Yeah, this three percent increase is due to inflation, for example. Yeah, they want to cover for inflation or compensate for expected inflation. Yeah, so they may include that. So this three percent is the growth rate. Yeah, so here we know the payment. Okay, the first payment. Yeah, PMT one or A one here is known twenty thousand. You know the term is 40 years and this is per year yeah? therefore you don't need to convert the term it's not per month yeah okay then you are told that the g here is three percent each year and the discount rate yeah? discount rate is the uh, interest rate here uh, the r which is ten percent okay so you just replace that in the formula here twenty thousand divided by ten percent minus ten percent is here minus 3% multiplied by 1 minus 1 plus 3% divided by 1 plus 10% all these raised to our 40 yeah? because 40 years okay so you uh, this is the value yeah? $265,121.57 yeah? so this is the uh, value yeah? present value of the benefit program now yeah? okay if you have this much yeah we have this much now you can invest that at 10 percent per year okay so uh, you can start withdrawing yeah, 20,000 for the first year then second year you can increase that by 3 percent and keep doing that for 40 years yeah, to uh, completely exhaust this savings yeah. but by the end of the 40, 40th year this uh, savings will become zero yeah but you will get 20,000 for the first year, second year you get 3% more, yeah? then for the following year you get another 3% more and so on, you keep doing that for 40 years, at the end yeah, you would exhaust, yeah? completely use up yeah, this amount, yeah? that is what it means by this growing annuity example. Yeah? Okay, so this is uh, the present value, you can also look at the future value, yeah? Now this is a retirement plan, but let's say you change this to you deposit twenty thousand every year for forty years. Okay.
okay, and you invest this, yeah, and then you increase the deposit by three percent per year, yeah, uh, allowing for let's say, uh, you get uh, salary increments, yeah, so you increase your deposit by three percent per year, and you keep doing that for forty years, and if you in, uh, deposit this all in an account that gives you ten percent interest return. Okay, what will be your future value of this growing annuity yeah, at the end of the 40th year? So you can use future value growing annuity formula yeah, and then solve for that. Okay, so do not use this formula. This is for present value. Yeah? So you can use for future value formula that I have shown you in the previous slide to solve for that. Yeah? So that this is the example. Yeah? Right, now we are going to look at the fourth uh, variant of annuity. Yeah? There are four variants here. The first one is, of course, ordinary annuity. Yeah? That's a normal annuity. Then we looked at uh, uh, annuity due. Then we looked at growing annuity. That's the third, uh, third one. And the fourth one is growing perpetuity. Yeah? All right. Now, we look at the present value of growing perpetuity rather than a fixed perpetuity. Yeah? So here the four new elements are R, M, is infinity yeah okay it's known but then it's infinity payment okay will be known the g is also known the growth rate of the uh, cash flow okay and the unknown element will be the present value of growing perpetuity yeah? this should be p yeah rather than a sorry you can change that yeah? p v g p yeah all right <clears throat> now let's look at the timeline yeah now for a perpetuity this is infinity, yeah? time is infinity, n is infinity. This is now, this is one period from now and so on. Okay. Now, this is the interest rate. Next will be the payment. Yeah. Now, we use P for perpetuity, yeah? perpetuity payment. Payment 1, payment uh, 2. This is 1 multiplied by 1 plus G. At time T, it will be P1 multiplied by 1 plus G raised to the power of T minus 1 and so on. Yeah? And this keeps going on. All right. Now here we can determine the present value of growing perpetuity. Yeah? Here it's correct. Yeah? This is wrong. Yeah? This is PVGP. Yeah? All right. Now there is no uh, future value here yeah? because the future value will be after the final payment. There is no defined final payment for perpetuity. Okay. Therefore, there is no future value formula here. Yeah? There is only present value formula. Uh, so, present value of growing perpetuity is similar, just P1 divided by R minus G. Yeah? Now, what is the difference between the present value formula between growing perpetuity and fixed perpetuity? This is the present value of perpetuity, the normal perpetuity, this is the growing perpetuity. Yeah? The only difference is this G, yeah? minus G. The rest will be the same. Of course, the second one is this. This is P, this is P1, yeah? because P is not stationary, it's not the same. Yeah? keeps growing at a constant rate. Therefore, we always take the uh, payment at the end of the first period. Yeah? All right. So this is the formula. So you need to uh, remember this formula. Yeah? Memorize this formula. Okay. And again, this condition applies. Yeah? This G must be less than R. Yeah? It cannot be G being greater than R. Then this will be negative. Yeah? It doesn't make sense. Yeah? Okay, and this is uh, reasonable because G cannot be greater than R uh, in the long run. Yeah? It can be greater than R in the short run. Okay, and you'll, you will have an application of this in advanced financial uh, management. Yeah? But here, okay, we, we ignore that. Okay, we assume that G will always be less than R. Yeah? Okay, so this is an application of the example that we have seen. The expected dividend next year, this is... The payment for P1 is $1.30. This is a preferred dividend. Yeah? And these dividends are expected to go. This is not preferred. Yeah? This is a, a common stock. Yeah? This is a dividend expected next year. Okay? And the dividends are expected to grow at 5% forever. Yeah? No, this, yeah? this is G. Yeah? Okay? So the condition is it grows at 5% forever. Then only is a growing perpetuity. Yeah? Discount rate is ten percent. What is the value of this promised dividend stream? So one dollar and thirty cents divided by R, ten percent minus five percent, you get twenty six dollars. Yeah. So you are willing to pay twenty six dollars if you want ten percent return. You pay twenty six dollars so that you can get one dollar and thirty cents uh, per year forever. So that's the answer. Yeah. So the present value of this growing perpetuity is twenty six dollars. Yeah. So this comes to the conclusion.